Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in the next lesson in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, we're going to take a look at the last two methods to get footage into your editing application and I'm talking about importing and AMA linking to. Now we've already talked about capturing and the capture settings in a previous lesson. In this lesson we're actually going to look at importing footage and AMA linking to it as well as the settings that go along with it. Okay, not a long introduction. Let's just get into Symphony and let's get started. Okay, so let's Alt Tab into Symphony or Command Tab for all my Mac friends out there. And the first thing we're going to talk about is importing some footage. So why don't we just do that? What I'm going to do is I'm just going to come into my Learn Media Composer bin here. I'm just going to delete the sequence that I have in there. I'll just say OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to import a clip. Now what most people like to do is they'll just right click and they'll say import or what they can do is simply navigate up to file and then they can come down to import right here or maybe you even have it mapped to a shortcut on your keyboard. Either way, once we come into import, what most people do is they say, okay, well I'm going to go and find the clip that I want to import. So let's just say hypothetically the clip that we're going to import here is I'll just come to the E drive. I'm just going to sort here. I just want to come down to my footage folder. And let's just pick one here, maybe even, doesn't even matter, how about a time lapse shot? And I'll just pick the first one. Now I know that this shot is DVC Pro 720p 2398. Now the only thing is, is that most people probably wouldn't know what type of clip this is. So what they do is they simply come in, they pick the clip they want to import, and they simply say open. And they don't really think too much about it until the clip gets into Media Composer Symphony and it doesn't quite look right, whether you're looking at it right here from the interface or whether you're looking at it on a broadcast monitor. There's a few things you're always going to need to do before you import anything into Media Composer. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel out of that. I'm just going to minimize Media Composer. I'm just going to hit Windows E to call up the Windows Explorer. I'll come to the data drive here. I'm going to come into footage and I think it was going to be time lapse we were going to be looking at and it was the very first shot. So normally what I like to do before I even start to import anything into Media Composer or Symphony, I'll always just right click and I'll open it with, and in this case we're going to open it with QuickTime. Obviously I could also have double clicked on that clip and what I normally like to do first is come in and show the movie inspector. This way I can see, okay, this shot is DVC Pro HD 720p 60 1280 by 720 It's also 2398 frames per second long and those really are the two most important things, 1280 by 720 2398. I know that I need to be in some form of a 2398 project to bring this clip in properly and I know what resolution I'll be working at or what frame size I'll be working at because obviously DVC Pro HD 720p is 1280 by 720. Now you're going to notice that right here it says calibrated before it says DVC Pro HD. Now why does it say that? Well the reason that it says calibrated is because I'm actually looking at all this footage using the calibrated Q plugins because these clips were imported originally on a Final Cut system on the Mac. Those Final Cut DVC Pro or they could be HDV codecs will only work on a Mac unless I have a third party plugin like Calibrated Q that I can use to bring this footage over from my Mac from Final Cut onto my Windows Media Composer machine. A fantastic third party tool. Obviously you have to pay for it, but if you're going to be bringing over a lot of footage, I highly recommend checking it out. Okay, so let's get back into Symphony here. I'm just going to close this all up here. I'm going to again Alt Tab back to Symphony and let's import that clip. What I'm going to do is come down and I'm going to right click and I'm simply going to say Import right here. Let's come back to where I was. Hopefully I'll remember it here. There we go. Time lapse. I'll just select the first one, 608. And again, like I said, what most people do is they just right away hit open. And that, again, is not what you're going to do. We already checked out the information about the clip inside the properties. But what I need to do now is to make sure that my import settings are set correctly before I actually click open. And where we do that is right over here under the options. So what I'm going to do is click on options. And right now we're only going to worry about the very first tab image. We do have some other tabs here for OMF, AAF, shot logs, audio, and XD cam that we'll get to in later tutorials. But for right now, in most cases, the predominant amount of footage you're going to be importing is going to be video only. Now, because I'm working in a progressive project, there's actually a category missing over here. And the category that's missing is field dominance. What's important to remember about field dominance, it comes into play anytime you're working with interlaced footage. Now, for 1080i NTSC footage, you're looking at upper field dominant footage. For NTSC standard definition, you're looking at lower field dominant footage. You're just going to want to make sure that your field dominance is set correctly in Media Composer before you import anything that you may have rendered from After Effects. 
Okay, so first category, we have the image size adjustment. You'll see Media Composer wants to know, well, is the footage that we're bringing in, is it sized for the current format? If it happens to be DV and you're importing it, do you want to crop it or pad it for that DV scan line difference, meaning obviously 720 by 486 versus 720 by 480? Now, in some cases, you might not want to resize smaller images. Or last but certainly not least, let's say you're importing a clip that's 1280 by 720 and you just want to blow it up to be 1920 by 1080. You can tell Media Composer that you want to resize that image to fit the current format raster. Okay, next, file pixel to video mapping. Your footage that you rendered out, maybe it was from After Effects, is it rendered out as RGB? Or is it rendered out RGB and you want to dither the image colors? Or is it rendered out 601 SD slash 709 HD? What's important to keep in mind here is that you're going to want to make sure that you mimic exactly what you did if it happens to be coming from After Effects. You're going to want to mimic your color space from After Effects inside a Symphony or Media Composer so that everything that moves across looks the same and, and gives you essentially the same look that you had when you were compositing it originally. Now, if you mess this step up, in most cases you're not going to know you did until you send your master out and someone looks at it on a broadcast scope. What's going to end up happening is, is that if you import the footage incorrectly here, your whites are either going to be through the roof and your blacks are going to be completely crushed. And that's really not what you want. So again, like I said, just a little bit of forward thinking to make sure that you know, you know, is the image size the one that you want for the current format? Is your pixel to video mapping RGB or 601 SD slash 709 HD? In most cases, when I'm rendering stuff out of After Effects, I'm going with RGB. So I'm just going to leave RGB selected right now. And last but certainly not least, is there an alpha channel? In this case, because it's standard footage that I'm importing, I don't have one. But if I rendered out something with a key from After Effects, I obviously could import that with an alpha channel into Media Composer. Okay, you'll see that if I was importing a still image, I can actually set the duration of that still image, and if it was an image sequence, I can also have Media Composer auto-detect sequentially numbered files. In this case, I'm just going to turn it off because I'm obviously not doing that, and I'm going to say OK. Now, a couple other things we got to make sure we set. First of all, what drive are we going to? In this case, I'm going to leave it going to the E drive, and what is the video resolution of the file that we're bringing in? Now in this case, because I switched the raster from 960 by 720 to 1280 by 720, you'll see it opens up a whole new bunch of codec possibilities. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick with DNX HD 90 MXF, and we're going to select that first clip, and I'm simply going to say open. What's going to happen, you'll see very quickly, is that Media Composer, or Symphony, is going to import that clip. We have it now right over here in our bin. I can simply double click on it, hit play, and there's that clip ready to work with inside of the Composer window. Okay, so that's basically importing in a nutshell. Now, if you're coming from Final Cut, you're going to be doing a lot of this, bringing footage over from legacy projects, you know, that you have that client that comes back once a year, always wants to use the same footage. You'll be bringing that footage over, and you'll be doing one of two things. You'll either be importing like I just showed you, or you're going to be AMA linking to it. So let's talk about that next. Okay, now before we actually get in and do some AMA linking to, I do want to point out something that's very important. So you purchased Media Composer, you downloaded it, you installed it. Now, let's just say hypothetically you're working in P2 and you want to import, you want to do some AMA linking to uh, these clips. Now, you go to AMA link to it. The problem is Media Composer doesn't seem to understand or Symphony doesn't seem to understand those files, the codecs in those files for you to AMA link to them. Well, I wonder what's going on. Well, what's important to keep in mind, like I said, when you download Media Composer and you install it, there's really only one AMA codec that's being installed, and that is the QuickTime codec. Now, how do I know that? Well, if you actually head on over to Avid's webpage right here, you'll see there's a section specifically for AMA. And you'll see if I scroll down here, we have some AMA plugin guides for Canon XF, GF Cam, MXF, P2, QuickTime, RED, and XD Cam. And you'll see down below that is all the different downloads that you can download to work with this different type of media. And you'll see right here that the QuickTime AMA plugin is installed with your software. So really, any type of file that can be encoded with QuickTime is supported for AMA linking to inside of Media Composer or Symphony. Now, what exactly does that mean, AMA linking to? Well, AMA linking to is kind of the uh, Final Cut equivalent to just doing a standard import. An import in Final Cut is really just a link to a file that's living on a hard drive somewhere. Whereas in Media Composer, when you do an import like we just did, you're actually creating a new piece of media. 
Now in this case, like I said, we're just going to be linking to them because I have the QuickTime installed already with my software. Right now, I don't need to worry about any of these other different types of codec installations that you're going to need to do if you want to work with any one of these different formats. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head back on over to Symfony here, and let's do an AMA link to a file. Now you'll see that when I imported that file, 608, it took probably about five or six seconds to import. Why, why don't we just do this? I'm just going to import another clip from that bin, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find the biggest clip. There we go. Okay, I don't know how long this clip is, 628, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to import it, and let's see how long it's going to take to import this clip. You'll see it says roughly about 20 seconds, and this is going pretty quick, again, for an HD file. We'll find out in just a second exactly how long this file is, so it's looking pretty accurate, probably about 20 seconds. Now, what's really cool about AMA, once this file gets in here, we'll see exactly how long it is. There we go and 628. So this clip was 25 seconds long. And that was, you know, a pretty quick import for, like I said, an HD clip that's 25 seconds long. Well, let's do the AMA equivalent now. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to right click on this bin and I'm going to select AMA or link to AMA files right here. Once I select it, it's going to say, okay, what files do you want to link to? And I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come up to Motocross. Why Motocross? Well, because there's a ton of clips inside of Motocross, although it actually looked like there was more inside of Time Lapse. There is. Look at all these clips inside of Time Lapse. Now, again, 20 seconds to import that 30 or the 25 second long clip, not 30 seconds. Let's see what would happen if I was to select everything inside this bin and basically just say go. You'll see the bin actually over here is actually flashing. And just like that, all of these clips are now inside of my bin. Well, it really couldn't be that easy, could it? Let's see. I'm just going to bring this down here. I'm just going to double click on one of these clips and you'll see, just like that, there's that clip playing back, ready to work with. Here's the next one. You'll see how fast that was. Remember, these are all time lapse shots. So that's why they look the way they do it. So that doesn't have anything to do with the AMA file. Here we go. Look at that. Looking very nice. All these clips are from Digital Juices, Video Tracks, HD. Now, how can I differentiate between what I just imported and what I just AMA linked to? What I'm going to do is just bring the bin over here, and you'll see I'm going to zoom in. You'll see really the main difference is the two clips that I imported are identified as clips. You'll see that they have the little clip icon beside them. The difference between those clips and the clips that were imported via AMA is the AMA files have that little clip icon, but they also have the little link icon with it. So basically these clips are being linked to. What's also important to keep in mind is that if I actually come over and let's just say these two clips that I did a, a real import with, if I say to delete them, well I can delete the master clip which is basically just the actual information linking to the clip in my hard drive and the media file associated with it. So I can say OK and those clips will be gone. With an AMA file there is no media to delete. Basically I'm just deleting a link to this file. So nothing is going to be deleted off my hard drive if I do it this way. I can obviously just re-AMA link to the clip if I needed to use it in my bin. But you'll see the huge, huge, huge workflow advantage you have, especially if you're coming from an application like Final Cut to Media Composer, using AMA linking to just to get up to speed. You know, let's say you have a client coming in, you just digitized a whole bunch of footage in Final Cut, you want to start doing this next project in Media Composer, Take all that footage. If you're working on the same system, I was telling people this the other day, if you're working on the same system, you can even do an AMA link to right into your Final Cut Pro scratch disk and import the footage from there. So let's say you wanted to work in Media Composer, but there's another editor coming in at night that's going to work in Final Cut. You can both have access to that footage, do what you need to do completely independently of each other using that same footage that was captured into the capture scratch. Okay, so I hope you can now see the difference between importing and AMA linking to. Huge advantage to AMA linking to, obviously speed is a big, big, big factor. With importing, what's important to keep in mind is that you need to know what the clip is that you're coming from. You need to know its properties, you need to know its frame rate. You also need to remember that pretty much just about every time you're going to do an import, you're going to need to get into those import settings and make sure that you have them tailored exactly the way that you need them. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or if you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.